Hi, this is Chris Heineken bringing you a new installment of our Insight Track series at Atrium. And the goal of the interviews is to bring market trending from thought leaders in industry and technology around analytics, machine learning, and how companies are evolving to be more data-driven with systems of intelligence. And so joining me today is uh, Dana Clark, who is the Director of Worldwide Sales Operations at Nutanix and has extensive knowledge of uh, the analytics and AI space, and more importantly, how some of those technologies are being put to, uh, to practical use. And so before we get started, Dana, I want to say a quick thanks to you. Uh, thanks for being a customer of ours. You and I, we get to meet you know, once a quarter on our market briefings. Uh, and to be honest, I usually learn more from you than you from me. So that's why I wanted to have you on this. So thanks for joining. Um, and to get us going, um, maybe you can talk through a little bit more about first, maybe your role at Nutanix. That would be great. Mm -hmm. And then we'll dive into some questions. Okay. Well, hey, Chris, it's uh, good to be here. Thanks for inviting me. And you, you say you get a lot out of me in the, the conversations we have every quarter. I, I'd say, likewise, I get a lot out of you guys uh, in the conversation. I think that's the the beauty of talking to people outside the company is you get different perspectives that uh, that you can bring back into the company and and hopefully apply to uh, to make things better. Uh, yeah. So my overall role, uh, so I'm part of the sales operations organization within Nutanix, and we are probably about a I think it's about a 1.5 billion dollar a year business roughly. You know, doing business all over the world. And my, my, my main focus is on the tools and processes uh, within the sales organization. And what, what I mean by that is I look at the tools that we've deployed. I look at the processes. Uh, one of the focus areas that I'm going to have now is we need to start documenting some of the key processes because uh, we've grown so fast and we we kind of left the paperwork behind and the, we need to go back and I would say, look at how we're operating the business and then um, make a few adjustments there. Perfect. And so, you know, I would imagine uh, productivity is top of mind as you think about that with your role. What are, do, you, do you have some thoughts as far as the role that kind of analytics, machine learning, predictions is playing as you think about uh, the strategy and your role in sales effectiveness going forward? Yeah, so I, I think you you said it's, you know, sales productivity is one of the key areas that we're looking at and that we're, that we measure. So we, we've, you know, we want to see sales productivity taking a, a turn for the better. I think, you know, a couple of things have impacted that uh, recently. We've, last year we were on a hiring when I say last year, we just finished our fiscal year. So our fiscal year ends at the end of July. So now we're into our new fiscal year. But last year, first six months of last year, we were on a, a, a crazy hiring uh, cycle for sales. And so we added a ton of new sales reps. That all came to, a, I'd say, a, a, a pause when the whole COVID-19 hit. So we didn't, it's not that we stopped hiring, we just stopped adding net new, we still continued to replace the, the, the resources that left. But where that left us was we, we had a, I mean, we have a huge amount of uh, new sales people that, you know, as, as a new rep, you're not productive right out the gate. And as we also started to open up new segments like commercial, we noticed the productivity numbers that we were getting from a commercial rep were vastly different than what we get from an enterprise rep. And so, you know, one of the things that we want to be able to do is drive that productivity for reps in, in all segments. And so we've got to make sure that we have good measurements in place, not only for the reps today, but also historically, where have they been performing? And then I think where, where AI comes in here is that we'd like to be able to look at the reps that are performing well and see if we can figure out what are the patterns of, you know, why are they generally speaking, more productive? Is it just their accounts? Is it who they are? Is it how they operate? And so what are some of the data points that we are gathering that we can use in order to provide us with some of those insights? So we're, we're starting to, uh, I mean, there's a ton of data out there that sales reps are generating every day. I think what we want to figure out is how can we start to capture some of that and use it to figure out how to drive productivity improvements for the sales organization. So 
those are some of the things that, that I think about. Um, yeah. I also understand that, you know, trying to get a sales rep to give us any information is kind of a hard thing to do, but sales reps are generating a, a trail of information behind them that we just have to figure out how to pick up those pieces and then use those pieces to provide feedback back to their sales managers, as well as to the sales reps themselves. And have there been any kind of key breakthroughs from a technology <clears throat> standpoint that you've worked with where you feel like you've been able to get, you know, better harness the productivity Anything there that really jumps out of you, Dana? Um, we're starting to get into an area where we're, you know, sales reps, especially now with COVID nineteen, they're they're doing a lot on email and and they're calendaring a lot of meetings um, in Zoom. Yeah. And so we're starting to look at how can we harvest the data that's in the email environment. So how can we look at uh, email traffic and meeting traffic and use that data to I'd say start to build profiles of what a, a productive sales rep starts to look like and what a, a, a low productivity rep looks like and see if we can coach the lower productivity reps to, uh, to act more like, and uh, I would say get a cadence like we have for, for the uh, highly productive reps. And, you know, we, we've, We've got some of the data systems in place. What we don't have yet is some of the dashboarding that we would need in order to provide those insights. Because really what, what we want to do is ultimately arm the sales manager with some data points that would they could have a coaching session with the sales rep and say, hey, look, I noticed that you're, you're not engaging enough new accounts or you're not um, having as many conversations with VPs and above. And, you know, is that what it, is that what it feels like on your side or, you know, what's, what's the, cause the data is saying that this is maybe an, an area where you're off a little bit. And that would be the things that would potentially help us with giving data points to have constructive coaching conversations to, you know, I would say, get a meaningful uh, change in the out, outcome of a, of a particular sales rep. That's what, that's what I would expect that we would, should be able to get to. And Dana, you mentioned there is a pretty big contrast between productivity between your commercial versus enterprise sales group. Is that just for the, the rest of the crew listening? Is that more kind of inside sales versus outside sales? Is that how you draw those lines of demarcation? How, how does that, what does that mean to you? No, it's actually, I mean, we have field reps that are, inter so we have field reps that are uh, focused on global accounts. We have okay. field reps focused on enterprise accounts. And we have a field team that's focused on commercial accounts. And if you think about it, and we also then have, obviously have, we have inside sales organizations that are aligned yep. to the field, but uh, you know, an enterprise account, enterprise account rep is probably going to be holding anywhere from five to, I don't know, maybe 50 accounts. Whereas a commercial rep is going to have, you know, hundreds of accounts. They have a territory they got to deal with. So they're, they're, they're having to, to, um, they're having to leverage a lot of different partners because we sell through a partner community. Uh, they're going to have, lots of little opportunities that they're having to to juggle and so their whole their whole work cadence is a little bit different than what i would expect out of an enterprise rep i see so it's more about just kind of where they're targeted versus how they work inside versus mm -hmm. outside understood um you and i we actually i think one of our briefings was right around like april as all the march april as the covid pandemic stuff was really hitting um and you mentioned to me at the time like you were starting to glean some patterns right? Some descriptive analytics and patterns from how the business was functioning. Yeah. Uh, is that continued? Have, have you continued to find like new patterns that are emerging where you're taking that information and redirecting it for productivity purposes and maybe where you spend uh, coverage, time with coverage? Yeah, and not, yeah I'm, not, I'm not sure we've actually put it to practical use yet. I mean, directly. I think some of the things that we noticed early on was the sales reps struggled with especially the field reps having to suddenly basically shelter in place. They, they couldn't go out and see their customers. So they had to shift everything to video calls, just like what we're having here. And yeah. that was a big change for them. And I think what, what we saw there was we saw a huge drop off on pipeline creation for a short period of time. And, but, but at the same time, we've also seen it come back up uh, at the other, uh, you know, as we got used to staying away from each other, we learn. We we found new patterns to um, to to engage our customers. I think we we also launched a couple of tools in a different way. So we we use we started to use LinkedIn and things like Discover Org because the sales teams were 
they were having a harder time identifying who they should be meeting with and who they should be reaching out to. And so those are some of the immediate things we did because we saw we saw this team struggling with get just getting those new contacts, new engagements. Um, I think what we're, what we're looking at kind of going, I would say going forward is um, I think one of the things that I'm worried about right now is the quality of the pipeline that's being created during this COVID period. I think I have a feeling that some of the sales reps are just putting things into the pipeline just to get their managers off their back. What we've got to do is look at, what's really happening with that pipeline that's being created now? Are we really closing it? Cause some of it just feels a little, a little softer than normal. Um, so that's a pattern I'm seeing is maybe there's a little bit more softness in the pipeline that, that we've got to be a little careful to, but at the flip side of things, there's also, we've got some crazy pipeline that, you know, it shows up today and we close it in 15 days. I mean, that's, let you know, you get the the yeah. crazy closed ones, and then you have the the ones that just drag on forever, or were put out there to to appease a manager. So, I think there's some pipeline analytics that we need to get into, and uh, I, I'm just seeing some patterns. I just haven't I don't, I don't have enough data yet to to say one way or the other on those. And, and as you think through productivity going forward, um, if you had kind of two investment buckets on where to place energy, do you think is there more value for Nutanix to harvest from going deeper with kind of just descriptive analytics and understanding what is happening or do you, are you, is your mindset more, we want to get into the predictive space and, um, you know, start doing more around machine learning and prediction. Where, where do you see, like, if you were to invest in one of those paths, you can only choose one, where would you go right now? That's a tough choice. Can I have both? I, (laughs) um, I would say, you know, immediately, would probably be to 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 get solid on the, the I'll, I'll say the the data insights of of how how is the business operating today and the reason i say that is because we also are making the change from a, a tcv model a total contract value model to an acv model and that that switch happened this month and so we're you know there's a lot of data and a lot of coaching around how to that we need to get we need to get good at. So you know, if I had to invest in something right now, that that would be the the focus for the I'll say the next month or three. But after that, you know, again, because we're gathering all this data, we should be providing those insights to the sales organization. So we should be saying, hey, you're you're not touching these accounts enough, or hey, and they they seem to have a higher propensity to, to, uh, to buy, or, Hey, you're not touching enough people in this account. You should expand. And here's some, here's some recommendations on who you could expand to. So it's really, it's using the data we have, but providing that feedback back to the sales rep. And they're not, they're not used to that. They're, you know, they're used to having to go off and do everything on their own or doing, doing it with their network. And it would be nice if the system could take the data that they've already given us in essence, and provide feedback to them with some pointers. Now, there are not absolutes, they're just recommendations. So it sounds like, um, obviously, get, getting the arms around the analytics, but on the predictive space, propensity to buy, I mean, the top three use cases we're seeing a lot in the you know, intelligent forecasting space, how do we help coach teams to figure out what the deal patterns are, deal health, like that whole, that's a big theme mm-hmm. out there in the market right now. Churn, customer retention is a big one. Yep, customer uh, acquisition, lead scoring. Those are some of the big themes we're seeing. Uh, as you think about the use cases that you're most optimistic about, in addition to maybe propensity to buy, any others that are jumping out to you for interest? Um, no, I mean, I think, I mean, we in our conversation, I think we've hit on the, the, the top ones, you know, the propensity to buy, I would say the, I would say also as well, maybe it's not so much AI, it's just pointing out that, you know, where, where you're, spending your time as a rep versus where you're getting your money sure, from. Sure. Um, so it's, you know, the 80% of your revenue is going to come from 20% of something. So are you, spe- are you, are you spending your time where you're going to get, where you're going to get the biggest, uh, biggest bang? And I, I don't, I'm not convinced that any of us, whether it's our sales reps or, 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 or me myself, I, am I spending my time wisely in the things that are going to have the biggest benefit? And I, it certainly would be nice if someone could tell me, Hey, yeah, if you spend your time on this one, it's going to, it's going to pay you pay you back in, uh, in, um, in bigger numbers. Those would be the things that I would, that I think would help the reps the most is 
and especially the commercial reps, there's so many deals they're having to chase. Which ones, which ones are better? Which ones yeah. uh, are the ones where they should be spending their time? Uh, I think those are the, those are the things that are, I would say, the, the biggest impact for us. That's great. Um, Two more questions for you, Dana. Advice that you would have for companies that are looking to get started in either the analytics or predictive space. If you were talking to your peers saying, here's what you need to kind of get going before you're going to see much success, the underpinnings you need to look for, any advice you'd give? Yeah, I, well, I, was, I was thinking about this. I was like, okay, so what, you know, if I look back, uh, you know, what worked well, what didn't work well? I think what what we started off with was we had a lot of good ideas. So we had a lot of good brainstorming sessions, uh, you know, whether you call them brainstorming sessions, rumbles, whatever. We, we got together as a team and said, well, you know, what do we really want to try and do with with our sales organization, what do we, how do we want to help guide them? So I think having those, I'll call it free thinking air, uh, discussions helps get you at least some good ideas on the, on the board. And then out of the good ideas, just pick a few, don't try and don't try and solve all the problems, just go after a couple of them. So get a, get a sense of what are the, the critical ones that could actually have some payback and, try and get your resources and everyone focus just on those. Um, you know, for us, I, I think it would be, we know that we, we are not, we're not good at everything. It would be good to also get some outside help. So if you can bring in some outside help, people that are familiar with, with uh, working in this space, you know, like, you know, we've talked to you guys, uh, we've talked to Salesforce, we talked to, you know, my network outside, you know, where are, where are the good places to go? In fact, I think that's where I, I came and uh, came in touch with you guys. And then I think the other thing we have noticed with, with uh, uh, data is some, I, I'm kind of impatient. So I like to, like to see the immediate payback sometimes it takes a while to get there because you got to get the data clean you gotta you gotta there, there's some there's some hurdles that you don't always have to go through with other programs but you do have to go through when you're trying to get into a data analytics and in an ai type environment so you got to have clean data and then you've got to be willing to fail fast and you know if, if you fail then you know great try a different direction um, and then one of the things that we, we came across that's really unfortunately slowed us down was uh, some of the data we wanted to go after is considered um, by, our, by our legal team private data. So in other words, we can't just go in and start scraping sales reps data. We have to ask them before we start scraping their data. And so we had, we had a, a lot more effort on data privacy that, than I had expected. And so depending on where you want to go with your data analysis, you've got to consider what kind of data privacy issues you're going to run into and what types of protections or systems you have to put in place in order for you to stay out of trouble. Um, you know, some geographies a little bit easier than other geographies, but you know, we had to, in some cases we had to put together opt out messages for our sales reps, uh, giving them an opportunity to, to say, no, I don't really want to be part of your exercise here. Um, that's great, Dana. I, like so, basically, be open-minded, brainstorm, find the things that move the needle for you. Stay focused on those. Be patient. Um, look through maybe some of the quirks around data privacy. Be mindful of those things. Those are those yeah. are four great nuggets for people. Yeah, that's yeah. outstanding. One uh, one final question for you. I'm just curious um, on the productivity front, since that's so front and center for you. Obviously, this whole remote working environment. You know, the, the common question is, well, you know, what's going to really go back to normal? Will we go back to normal? Do you think through this whole process we're going through with the pandemic, um, do you think is that going to like this whole remote working environment? Is that going to drive more sales productivity by virtue of the things we're having to innovate with right now that will stick? Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to drive more productivity. It's going to drive probably a different work cadence, I think at least in the near term. I mean, I, I still, when I talk to the sales reps, especially, well, I was going to say, especially in Asia, but uh, you know, Asia reps are clamoring for us to open our offices again, to have that face to face again, same, yeah. same thing going on in Europe as well. And I think what, what, uh, what we've also noticed is that to, to break into new accounts, you need to have, you need to be able to build those relationships and it's really hard to build relationships, uh, 
over video conferences all the time. Just, I mean, if, if all you do is just video conferencing, it's, uh, you can't, you can't sustain that. I think what I, what I would expect to see is that there will probably be more remote engagements, but there are still also going to be the, the need to have those, those face-to-face -face engagements. It's just a matter of what's the mix going to be. I'd say it's going to be more remote and a little bit of face-to-face, -face. um, but I think eventually we'll we'll get back pretty close to where we were before. Well, thanks for the, for at least for the at least for the field reps. Yeah, yeah. Well, great perspective, Dana. We always learn a ton from you. Thanks for sharing your thoughts and uh, your insight with uh, with us and, and the broader community today. I appreciate it, Chris. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me here.